Okay, so in today's video, I want to discuss um, Bitcoin self-custody and to touch on some of the key differences between what a signing device is and what a software wallet is. Um, I think it's important for everyone using Bitcoin to have, you know, a pretty good understanding as to what are the different components that go into self-custody, okay? So to start off with, let's talk a little bit about Bitcoin signing devices. Bitcoin signing devices, um, like the ones pictured here, the seed signer, the jade, the uh, cold cards, and the passport, they're primarily used for two purposes. So the first purpose, and probably the most important one, is to create a random cold seed phrase or private key. Now, when you say a cold seed phrase or a cold wallet, what you mean is that these seed phrases have never touched an internet connected device. So because all of these signing devices never plug into your computer, um, they never connect to the internet, the seed phrases that they generate are cold seed phrases, okay? Um, these seed phrases can then be used later on with a software wallet to derive a, um, a Bitcoin wallet, right? So it's the seed phrase that's, that's, you know, that's literally the seed, okay? And then depending on your derivation path, that's the Bitcoin wallet that you derive from that seed. The other thing that signing devices are used for is to verify the details of transactions and then to sign them using the private key um, and you would do this whenever you want to spend your bitcoin okay one thing that's really nice about all of the newest bitcoin signing devices is that they're standardized in the way that they generate your wallet from your seed phrase um, and they're all standardized you know pretty much according to this bip bip 39 so if you want to learn more about that you can look up that bip um, but what this means is that you can recover a seed phrase that was originally made with one signing device onto any other one of these signing devices. And then from there, you should be able to recreate the exact same wallet that you had been using before. This is really important because you don't know whether the company that makes your favorite signing device will always be around. And you don't want to be completely dependent on them in case your signing device ever breaks in the future and you know maybe they've gone out of business so you want to make sure that you're able to recover your wallet um, in all of these you know kind of unforeseen circumstances it's also nice being able to upgrade your signing device to a, a newer one right maybe there's a new version of a signing device and it has more features um, and you want to upgrade to that signing device well, it's nice to be able to upgrade to it without having to make a brand new seed, right? So you can simply recover your current seed phrase onto whichever new signing device you upgrade to. It's important to know that you can have your seed phrase loaded onto multiple signing devices, just like how you can have multiple copies of the key to the front door of your home, okay? The signing devices are just devices that store the key, but the key itself is just data, right? So you can load that data onto however many signing devices you want. Um, and when you delete your seed phrase off of any of your devices, it doesn't affect the other ones, right? The other ones will still have that seed loaded onto them. Um, but for the one that you deleted it off of, you can always recover it later on. Right. So if you're dealing with like a lot of different wallets, you know, maybe you're you're you've got a few different wallets for a few different things. You can load a seed phrase onto a device, use it, delete it, load a different one onto onto that device, use it, delete it. You know, maybe you have um, a couple going across a couple different devices. The seed phrase itself is just the key and you can load the key onto any device. OK, so that's the point I want to get across. Now, if you plan to have your seed phrase loaded onto multiple devices at once, 
just be aware that you're adding more trust and risk into the equation, both because of the additional trust you're placing in each of the device's hardwares and firmwares, as well as because of the added risk of having to secure multiple devices from you know, attacking thieves. Okay. Um, you might be wondering, you know, why would you ever have your seed phrase loaded onto multiple devices? Maybe you have um, a seed phrase that you're sharing with your wife or your kids. Um, and so, you know, maybe you want any and all of you to be able to sign and broadcast transactions at any, at any given moment. And so in this case, you would, you know, have the seed phrase loaded onto multiple devices, right? Each person would have their own device. But again, you know, you just have to be aware that that adds risk, okay? So whatever setup you have, however many places you're storing your seed phrase, just always be super aware that, you know, you, you've got to make sure that those stay secure, <laughs> every single copy. If any of the copies get out, then, you know, someone could very easily steal your Bitcoin. So the seed phrase is the most important piece of information to keep secure and, um, you know, private. Okay. So what are Bitcoin software wallets primarily used for? Bitcoin software wallets like Bitcoin Core, Sparrow, Spectre, Electrum, Nunchuck, or Blue Wallet, these are all used for a few different purposes. So the first thing you might be using these for, especially if you're new to Bitcoin, is to create a random hot seed phrase or private key. Now, as opposed to a cold seed phrase, a hot seed phrase is one that's been generated on a internet connected device. Okay, so, um, you know, these software wallets are usually running on a computer or on a phone and the computer and the phone are both internet connected. So any seed phrases that you make in these software wallets will be hot. Another thing that you're going to use your software, software wallets for is to view the histories and balances of any of your imported Bitcoin wallets. And you can import, you know, any wallet you want from uh, either a hot or a cold key, right? Um, but when you import this Bitcoin wallet, what the software wallet is doing is it's querying the blockchain and it's checking for any of the relevant addresses belonging to your Bitcoin wallet and checking whether they have any histories associated with them. So whether they've been um, used to transact with in the past and whether they have any current balances. And if it finds any of that information when it's querying the blockchain, it will then display that on the screen, right? Within the application. Um, so, you know, I mean, thinking about it like that, right? The, the data itself is on the blockchain and the blockchain is public and anyone can query it um, at any at any point in time, right? If you've, if you've got a connection to the, to the um, blockchain using your Bitcoin node, you can query that. And if you know the addresses you're trying to look up, right? If you have the um, XPUB of your wallet and you know all of the addresses belonging to that wallet, you can query the blockchain from any of these entry points, whether it's Nunchuck or Sparrow or any of these other software wallets, and you can get the balances associated with your Bitcoin wallet. Okay. The third thing is to be able to construct Bitcoin transactions and then to broadcast them to the network after they've been signed. And the fourth, uh, but not least, is to facilitate the creation of multi-sig wallets. So just like the best signing devices, the best Bitcoin software wallets are also interoperable, meaning you can import your Bitcoin wallets into whichever one suits your needs best or whichever one you like the best, right? Maybe you like the feel or the features of one wallet over another. So you choose to use that one instead. All you need in order to import your Bitcoin wallet is your XPUB and your derivation path. And with these two pieces of information, you'll be able to give the software wallet all it needs to then go query the blockchain and find all the histories and balances 
associated with that Bitcoin wallet. So again, you know, it's not that the Bitcoin is somehow like living inside of this software wallet, right? Really what it is, is the Bitcoin is on the blockchain, right? All of the information in regards to where the Bitcoin is and who owns what, that's all stored publicly on the blockchain. And what a, what a Bitcoin software wallet is doing is it's connecting to that blockchain and then looking for the specific addresses that you give it in order to display your histories and your balances. And then what it's also doing is it's constantly watching the blockchain to see if any new activity um, happens in regards to those addresses. So it will be checking to see if you're receiving anything um, or checking to see if you're spending anything, right? And whenever it finds changes in balances of any of your addresses, it will update on the application for you to see that something just happened with your Bitcoin wallet. So I hope that that kind of helps you understand um, a little bit better these two different pieces of self-custody, right? So both the signing devices, which are really just fancy devices that store your private keys and can sign um, your transactions, and then software wallets, which are entry points to being able to see your histories and your balances of your Bitcoin wallet. Um, you have to really use both of these together, right? So if you're trying to make a Bitcoin wallet, that's a cold wallet, you need a offline signing device to create that seed phrase. But then you also need a internet connected Bitcoin software wallet that is connected to, you know, a Bitcoin node and can query the blockchain and then can look for all your balances, create transactions, connect to your signing device to sign those transactions, but then broadcast them to the network once they're signed. So the two pieces are very important. They're also very interoperable. So you can pick up your seed phrase and move from one device to another, have it copied in multiple devices if you want. Um, and then likewise, you can have your Bitcoin wallet in one uh, Bitcoin software wallet or another or two at a time, right? Maybe you want to have one in Sparrow on your desktop while also having it in Nunchuck on your phone so that you can view your uh, Bitcoin wallet from both of those places at once. That's also possible. All right, so that's it for this video. Hope that that uh, maybe, you know, helped you understand this a little bit better. But if you have any questions, feel free to comment or, you know, reach out on Twitter. Thanks for watching.